Probably one of the funnier things about the Aristocats was its play on words title, so leave it to Dingo to come up with one of their laziest yet for their ripoff of it. Nice cats. <laughs> Unlike most of the other Disney cash-ins I've looked at, the Aristocats isn't based on any classic story, and I think Nice Cats is one of, if not the only, knockoff of it. The Aristocats came out in 1970 and was successful enough back then, but hasn't really had as much staying power as a lot of other Disney animated features, so most cash-in tune companies didn't really have it on their minds to bother ripping off 25 years later. But thankfully, Dingo was there to fill everyone's bootleg Aristocats needs. The Aristocats is a story about some fancy pants cats owned by the evil stepmother from Cinderella. She's absolutely insane and decides to leave all her money to her cats, driving her butler into a murderous rage as he'll only inherit after the cats. I assume the money couldn't just go to the cats directly, so he'd probably still get it, you just have to look after the cats, but whatever, thought really isn't part of the Aristocats plot. He drugs the cats with a bunch of sleeping pills. So many that I thought this was his plan to murder the cats, but no, he just wanted them to sleep so he could drown them. Because it's so hard to get a cat to go to sleep. Luckily for Duchess and her kittens, the not-so-great mouse detective Winnie the Mouse is on the case, and they're helped back home by Baloo the Cat. Because of the cat necessities, and everybody wants to be a cat or something. I think there's also a side plot about a drunken goose and some dogs that wanted to murder people. I don't remember. It's a really complicated story. And by that, I mean, it really wasn't. The butler tries to murder the cats, fails, they come back and murder him in a trunk, and the crazy old biddy gets even more rich with her slightly racist cat band. I tell you all this because Nice Cats doesn't really follow the Aristocats plot. I don't know why I told you about it. The biggest thing Nice Cats actually steals from Aristocats is the character designs in typical crappy dingo fashion. Many of which we've seen already because, of course, dingo reuses everything. The DVD cover of Nice Cats copies Aristocats even more closely than the actual movie does. If you think there's an evil butler in Nice Cats, prepare to be disappointed. Butler did it! Hell, there isn't even three kittens and nice cats as they cut them down to two, and they even left the bow on top of Knock Off Marie's head, which was taken away for Wabu's eventual love interest. And yeah, that's quite the face rip-off Baloo the cat is making. If you think he's making eyes at the phony star of nice cats, you'd be wrong. This is the face of a cat who's just realized he's dead. I sip that cup of life with my fingers curled. Sweet Archie's cats in Wabu party! It was incredibly hot that day in town. Breathing was difficult for many people because the air was very stuffy. Living in a very humid climate, I know all about it being very muggy out, but I think if you're having trouble breathing, you've got more problems than the weather. Fortunately, yesterday, the big holidays began, and everybody was able to do so, went to the country or to the beach. Oh, so everyone just went on vacation or holiday at the same time, did they? Where are you? She called impatiently. Laureen, Lionel, Lucy, come on. If we don't leave now, we will get stuck in the worst traffic jam ever. She's honking her horn at her cats to hurry up. I'd say this woman is expecting a lot out of her triple L cats, but then again, this is the story ripping off the one where the old coot expected cats to handle her money after her death, so fair enough. <laughs> it's not fair enough.
We're coming, Mrs. McDonald, they shouted out of the house. So here's a new one for Dingo, but really, it's an old one. A narrator who won't shut the hell up and keeps informing us of stuff like the characters having delivered a line after they've spoke. Because we're too stupid to know if a character said a line if a narrator doesn't explain it to us afterwards. Phelis sarcastically said. Oh, I was being sarcastic? Sometimes I don't know if I'm joking or not. Anyway, the Halloween series was inspired by Friday the 13th and Nice Cats. Phelis super seriously explained. One of the reasons I'm guessing we have an annoying narrator in this one is that this is one of Dingo's earlier works, back when they were still using that media concept name. And some of their productions before Nice Cats in 94 weren't animated at all and were more like stupid video storybooks. And I'm guessing that Nice Cats is kind of a transitional movie from that to their actually animated stuff. I mean, if you want to call it Dingo normally does animated... This also means that this dingo tale has even less voice actors than usual, as it seems to be the one woman handling everything, because it's like she's telling us a story. <laughs> Lazy. Anyway, as we've cut the brown kitten out of the story, we're just left with the white and black one. Though the black one has been lightened up a bit to gray. In fact, he's lightened up so much, he actually turns into another white kitten during a bunch of his shots. This is particularly bad on the DVD I've got because it's a crappy VHS transfer that's been blown out a bit. But even looking at a nicer copy of the video from the Polish version, this kitten still turns white during certain shots. Well, there's a new form of whitewashing for ya! Since I'm nice, like a cat, let's switch over to the slightly better looking video with the English track on it. Then again, not being able to see this as well might have been a blessing. Come on, Lucy! We always have to wait for you, Laureen said, who was Lucy's mother. It's nice that the narration is not only intrusive, but also extremely clunky. I can't find my damned hairbrush! Damn dingo, there it is! Not even a minute in and these cats are already cursing. Dingo always provides top-notch children's crap. Don't say damn, Laureen moaned. Who have you learned these expressions from? From Mrs. McDonald, Lionel Lucy's brother grinned. Well, if there's anyone who can turn a cat into a bigger jerk than they normally are, it's Mrs. McDonald, am I right? Seriously, am I? I have no idea what she's like, and I've seen this movie before. Don't say such nonsense, Laureen said strictly. Normally, I'd say it'd be pointless for you to tell us the emotion of a line just delivered, but I suppose in Dingo's case, it might help to know what they're actually trying to go for. Also, you'll notice that a lot of the times that rip-off Duchess, Laureen, appears on screen in a full body shot, part of her butt will be floating around the bottom of the screen. It's the Dingo seal of quality. She says it often when she thinks she's alone. She has never spoken one of those words in her life. What? What the hell is going on here? <laughs> Lucy and Lionel giggled because they knew better. Oh, now it makes sense why bobbing a head up and down equals laughing in the dingo universe, because they explained it here. If you don't come now, I will go to Acapulco alone, they heard Mrs. McDonald calling. Ah, they're going for a quick drive over to Acapulco. So, uh, where are they starting from? They don't actually tell you until way later in the movie, so let's skip ahead. But I don't know the way. It's too far to San Francisco. Right. San Francisco to Acapulco. That's only at least a 41-hour drive. Good thing Mrs. McDonald's can take driving shifts with her cats, though. Lucy, Lionel, you must walk slowly and demurely. You aren't street cats. You are beautiful and well-educated domestic cats. Unfortunately, Lucy and Lionel laughed. Yes, anyone having some amount of joy in this movie is unfortunate. I'm really confused, though, that they were supposedly laughing here without bobbing their heads. 
Stupid proto-dingo media concept. You'd never miss the chance for a laughing shot later on. Then Mrs. McDonald drove them all into a disintegration ray and they all died. The end. Or maybe instead she drives them over to the horror that is bunny fashion. No wonder she wanted to get out of town. I bet all the bunny death squads are already out in force. Bye-bye, Lucy Lionel. Have a good time, the birds twittered. That's a Offensive birds, your Twitter is suspended. Our crew drives past some more familiar dingo sites like the No Alley, where Lucy and Wabu would start their on again, off again relationship in Pocahontas. We also see that this alley is home to some more bunny propaganda. Stupid social justice bunnies ruining everything for the edge rabbits. And don't forget, power to all rabbit! I guess we might as well give the bunnies power, not like they could screw things up any worse at this point. Whatever, our heroes have escaped the evil bunnies or whatever I'm going on about, and they're now in Old West Town, and because it's the Old West, they've got a best western! And right past that is the sign for Acapulco. That was a quick four. 40 some hours. Bye bye, Mrs. McDonald. Wait, they're still getting buys from people? Is there a sign for Acapulco ahead in San Francisco? Relax well, the hedgehog waved. It's so much easier to just say they did something rather than actually having them do it. Shut up! Mrs. McDonald yelled in a murderous rage as she killed them all. Lucy and Lionel were glad because Mrs. McDonald had a convertible. Ooh! Ooh, a convertible. So they didn't notice the great heat too much and the trip was very pleasant. I bet that'd still get pretty hot and uncomfortable on a 40 some hour drive. By the evening, Mrs. McDonald and her cats reached Acapulco. You trying to tell us that this is the same evening of the day they left? What'd they do, the time warp again? Lucy has this thirst for adventure like her father, Lorene said worriedly to Mrs. McDonald. And that's how he died, I guess. And yeah, the cats and humans actually do have conversations and nice cats, so if Mrs. McDonald wanted to leave them her money when she bites it, I guess that'd make more sense here than it did in Aristocats. Dr. Jekyll and Labor? Well, that's a different story. That's what I really think it says! You better correct me! Mrs. McDonald said, Good night, Mrs. McDonald, Laureen, Lucy, and Lionel answered and fell asleep immediately. Is this movie killing the dingo music? He prepared breakfast. Slurping, they drank their milk hungrily. If this was dialogue I actually cared about hearing, I might complain about the overly loud slurping. Actually, I will anyway. It's slightly annoying. Lucy, Laureen said strictly to her daughter, listen to me. This morning, the milkman told me a cat catcher roams around in this area. He likes to catch beautiful and cared for cats like you. For you. Don't cause any troubles, dear Lucy, and stay nearby. This is proper behavior for a respectable domestic cat. Yeah, most cats are really good at obeying orders. This movie really knows cats. So once Mrs. McDonald's and Luscious drink themselves into a coma, Lucy sneaks off for a wild night in Acapulco. <laughs> Cruddy walk cycle to the inane dingo tunes, man, nothing gets crazier than that! <laughs> ah crap, it's one of the pointless dog goons from the Aristophats, this scene's gonna go forever. <laughs> Never mind, not since Robin vs. Mew Mew have I seen a battle so intense. Did they just scratch out the wrong name on their watermelons? Lazy dingo shopkeeps. Oh dear, Lucy was shocked. It's five o'clock already. She ran back to the cottage as fast as she could. She hissed at a dog and that was the day shot. Gotta love that dingo storytelling. I mean media concept. Where were you for such a long time? You've made me so mad that I don't even look like the same character! The next day was spent much as the one before. 
As soon as Mrs. McDonald and Laureen had their afternoon nap, Lucy had another investigation tour. Are we sure Lucy's not stuck in a Groundhog Day time loop? She saw a little mouse. Does this mouse think it's a snake? Hold on, I'm gonna catch you! Well, I hope the mouse takes her up on that. Just try to catch me. I'll get you, Lucy called and started for a jump and... They couldn't animate the neck going over the cat. This mouse seriously plays bait just so that this lunatic can go around catching cats. Acapulco is crazy! What a nice cat we have here. Thanks for the title drop, Mr. I Love Cats Cat Catcher. Man, you know those cat catchers, they're all over the place. Meanwhile, Luscious notices that Lucy is missing, so she says shit that scares Lionel White. I kind of thought that with this guy's I Love Cats shirt that maybe he caught them and made them all his pets, but nah, he just throws them in a dungeon. Which is even more screwed up when you think about the fact that cats can talk to humans in this universe. So do they at least get a phone call? Maybe his shirt is a lie and he's really part of the bunny regime. That mouse is playing with fire though to pop into the cell and laugh at the cat that wanted to eat it and it got thrown in here. And although she couldn't have believed it, she actually fell asleep a short time later. A sleeping cat, hard to believe. I thought you needed a bottle of sleeping pills for that. I'm getting more and more worried about Lucy, Lorraine said to Mrs. McDonald. Cue the knockoff Peter Gunn theme for the where in the world is Lucy scene. Bad news, Mrs. McDonald said with a hoarse voice when she came back. A man noticed that cat who looks exactly like Lucy and he was caught by the cat catcher. My poor child, Lorraine moaned and started to cry. And also Mrs. McDonald shed a tear down her cheek. Nobody closed an eye that night. Why don't you go down to the cat pound and get her? This seems like a problem with an easy solution here, guys. Hello, my beautiful miss. So the Thomas O'Malley ripoff just appears out of Arista Fat Air into Lucy's cell and for some reason hits on Lucy sometimes. Cat petters were always something I thought were missing from the Aristocats. Dingo Concept got kinda lazy with Baloo the Cat, so instead of actually making a crappy version of him, they just used their ripoff Duchess, slightly modified it, and kinda colored it like Thomas. Do you have any idea what will happen to us? The beautiful and well-behaved cats like you are sold expensively. If you are lucky, you will get a nice family. One that's actually nice enough to come to the pound and get you, unlike the one that no knows where you are and does nothing. I don't want to be sold. Especially with a piece of my butt missing. Hey, maybe Laureen can give you that extra piece of butt that she is flying around, Lucy. The tomcat shrugged his shoulders. Not literally. Figuratively shrugged his shoulders. A mangy cat like me won't be sold to a nice family. Ignoramus. No, I have to go into a laboratory for animal experiments. <laughs> Uh, are you about to go all Janice the little pig on us nice cats? Do you know what really happens in the laboratory for animal experiments? The animals are teased until they die. They die just from teasing? Open, open, I want to get out of this place. <laughs> Wow. We have to find a better idea. Uh, by my way, my name is Lucy and yours? Uh, my friends call me Charlie. Sorry that I freaked out just now. Charlie the Thomas cat sure regained his composure quick. Fantastic, Charlie laughed. I see you're not just beautiful, you're also clever. Awkward. Also awkward is the fact that the white on Charlie's stomach disappears depending on what angle he's standing at. Guess we're making up for Lionel turning white sometimes. Help! What's the reason of this fuss? The angry cat the catcher said as he plotted into the room. <coughs> Lucy's ill. I think she's gonna die. Oh, help! Shut up. The fifth cat becomes ill. I can't sell her. Why, I don't believe he loves cats at all. The cat catcher bent over. At that moment, Charlie jumped up and bit into the cat catcher's bottom. Wow, what a great plan. I guess they must have knew that the cat catcher had a glass ass. Let's go home! Wait, they ran all the way back to bunny fashion in San Francisco? 
826 hours. Okay. Nah, let's not be silly. I guess that exact same building is just in Acapulco as well. Let's go back home. We tried nothing and we're all out of ideas. Let's just write Lucy off as dead. These holidays are ruined completely for me, Mrs. McDonald said. Let's face it, Mrs. McDonald's is irate. But maybe Lucy will come back. Oh, Lionel, but you heard. Somebody saw the cat catcher taking Lucy away. It's much easier to pretend she's dead and go home. Stop, stop, Lucy called. Stop, hold on, hold on. But neither Mrs. McDonald nor Lauren nor Lionel heard her. I can't believe Dingo didn't fix that flub. Actually, I'd be surprised to hear if Dingo ever re-recorded a line. Damned! These cats aren't nice. More like potty mouth cats, yes. Come on, Lucy, Child called. Child? Close enough. Look, Child even has a piece of Lorraine's butt following him sometimes. Anyway, this is the piece of the plot that I guess is closest to something in Aristocats, with Charles leading Lucy back to San Francisco, just like Thomas led the upper cats back to Paris. We're going to San Francisco. Have any ideas? You're going to Frisco? Well, forget the train. They find every stowaway and bring them to the animal home. Damn! Damn! I guess you have to walk. But be careful. The other day, a friend of ours, he was run over. Oh, that doesn't sound too good. Might be a bit of an understatement, you barbed cat prick. Anyway, since they can't catch the train, I guess they're just gonna do that 826 hour walk back to San Francisco, but it's okay, cause they cut like 10 minutes off of the trip by riding in some hay briefly. Until the crazy farmer notices and wants to murder them for it. How should we carry on? I'm hungry. We have to eat vegetables today. Vegetables, are you joking? Vegetables aren't bad. Little bunny nibbled beside them. No one asked you, knockoff thumper. Come on, I know a great field of turnips, not far away. Turnips. Since this secret agent of the bunny regime offered them turnips, obviously the next thing we see is the eating carrots, which doesn't hit the spot at all, so it's time to hunt stupid Wooshul. You must be very hungry if you want to eat squirrels. We haven't eaten for some days. Go to Mario's. I love helping people that try to eat me. He's the world's best cook. There, you will get leftovers of meat as much as you want. Yeah, his restaurant must be really good if he always has large piles of leftovers. You have to go straight, to go straight ahead. Thanks for the directions of you have to go straight to go straight. We'll never miss it now. Oh, you're not getting off that easily. Die, Wu Shell, die! Save it from Wampo, you stupid kid! <laughs> Of course, Mario was this guy with his mini-Asian stereotype. I do suppose, though, that this scene really is a one-to-one -one conversion of Aristocats. Oh well, at least we know that this guy loves to help cats. One a day, I'm gonna kill this cat and serve him to Mr. Crunchabone for lunch. There, Charlie whispered and pointed towards the garbage cans. Without looking, Lucy ran on. <laughs> Damn! We set off the duck alarm. Startled by the noise of the gooses. Seen here, gooses. Maybe they're thinking of some other movie. I love cats. Are you hungry? What would you like to eat? I have a wonderful tuna pizza. Well, I was with this story until that. This went too far. A bon appetito. We can't really eat it as it's just part of the background, so just pretend. Glad we're having a little Lady in the Tramp reference in the Aristocats knockoff, though. You want to go to San Francisco, Mario asks. No problem. Down in the harbor, every ship goes to San Francisco. Well, wow, that sure is a load of crap, but whatever ends this story at this point sounds good. Unfortunately, it looks like they got on the boat that takes you to Pocahontas instead. To 
to America, to America. Oh, I don't feel like greeting visitors. Loreen, please go and tell them I don't feel well. You know you're lazy when you're getting your cat to answer the door for you. Also, where does Mrs. McDonald's get off asking the grieving mother to answer the door, disgusting wench? We don't want to buy anything, Lorene said. Don't you recognize me? Lucy asked unfounded. Unfounded? So did the trip over here make Charlie shrink? And who are you? Lorene asked Charlie. Charlie is my name, madame. I'm delighted to make your acquaintance. If he helped Lucy, he can stay with us as long as he would like. In some ways, he reminds me of Lucy's father. Do you really want to stay with us? Well, I would like to get to know your family for a few days and then we'll see. You're all being very presumptuous. You will like my family. Ah, my tail! Lucy smiled and looked very amorously at Charlie. Luckily, the movie ends before we get the mother-daughter-cat threesome with Charlie. What a disgusting story. Lucy shouldn't have gotten together with a weird old alley cat. She obviously should have gotten romantic with a raccoon. Wait, I didn't write that. Most of these cats are so stupid. WABOO! <laughs> Yo!